Alex, she's looking through the international papers. Guess what the international press is talking about. Um, could it be Hillary Clinton by any chance? Could be. It is, in fact, mm. at least for the Wall Street Journal. Uh, that's on the front page. Health becomes a focus in the U.S. presidential race. It's much the same for the Washington Post as well, Stuart, the mm. newspaper says, and I quote, taking Clinton's team's word for it on her health in light of Sunday's episode is no longer enough. People have questions about her health, and these must be addressed now. It's precisely what the British paper The Guardian is talking about today, isn't it? The Guardian says, in fact, it's all really a symptom of Clinton's poor press communication. Uh, they, they're, for, they're known for delaying reporters, scrambling the timeline. It's all sort of become standard practice between, um, well, when the campaign deals with reporters. And ultimately, what could have been a simple bout of illness has now been blown out into a much bigger issue surrounding the presidency. And The Guardian says the reason for that is the secretive way that the Clinton campaign goes about its business, especially when it has to deal with issues that it think could harm them in the long term. You found one um, uh, website that's very fed up with all the speculation now. Well, Vox uh, says, stop with what it calls the pneumonia punditry. Stop all the speculation. It does concede, though, that this incident with Clinton reveals really how little we know about the health of presidential candidates. We're so focused on other issues, what they can do as president, that we actually forget that they also have health issues like the rest of us. Now, in July, Clinton's doctor had in, had assured that uh, she was perfectly healthy. Uh, in fact, one professor interviewed by Vox says it's pretty much the norm to sort of hide your medical history. Most famously, Paul Songas, who was a presidential candidate who ran against Bill Clinton in 1992, uh, his, his campaign created the impression that he had been cured of cancer when in reality he hadn't. And we learned about this five years later when sadly he died. Now, Clinton, of course, uh, when she did uh, semi-collapse, was attending a 9-11 memorial event, uh, and there is a lot of reflection uh, in the press today, isn't there? There is. Let's start with this article in the Wall Street Journal that's been penned by Dick Cheney, the former U.S. vice president, and his daughter Liz. A pretty scathing article on Obama's record on in, in the war against terror. Uh, the, the Cheney says, uh, well, the Cheneys say that Obama promised to end wars and instead has made defeating our enemies significantly more difficult. They accuse Obama's strategy of leading to the U.S. bowing down to Iran, to allowing China and Russia to emerge as global dominant forces. And also they accuse the U.S. president of diminishing the U.S. military at a time when terrorism is increasing. And in particular, they are, of course, very critical about the decision to close down on Guantanamo, saying we are, quote, no longer interrogating terrorists. It's all a little ironic, obviously. Cheney was George Bush's vice president, and together they were the ones that came up with the strategy of the post-9-11 war on terror that ultimately led to the rise of the Islamic State group. And the 9-11 anniversary coinciding this year as well with the Muslim Eid al Adha festival and uh, that US-Russian truce uh, signed on the weekend, of course, uh, over Syria. Well, the, the Guardian reports that for 250,000 people in Aleppo, it'll be the third month that they're living under siege in the ruins of their city, so it won't be much of a festival for them. Uh, the British Daily is also pretty sceptical about the truce. It says as long as the details of the deal are kept secret, the peace remains fragile and, and actually sort of critiques the fact that we don't really know the details of the agreement. All, that, all the information we glean are from the, from the press services of the U.S. and Russia. In any case, The Guardian says this deal is at least an acknowledgement from the U.S. that Russia has, quote, shifted the balance of forces in the war against Syria. Perhaps not surprisingly, a lot of uh, criticism of the truce as well. A lot. Well, let's start with Al-Quds, which is an Arab language paper out of London. They say the deal is unfair because it doesn't actually talk about the other terrorist, terror groups fighting close to the regime, like Hezbollah. That's what they say, I quote. Now, uh, Russia could also be uh, elevated to superpower status with the, with, with the outcome of this deal. That's what The Independent says on its front page. The British Daily notes that one of the biggest weaknesses in the deal is the fact that it also targets the Al-Qaeda-linked Al-Nusra Front group, for, uh, which has sort of been leading the non-IS group armed opposition in Syria, very complex. But basically, The Guardian says by grouping these two organizations together, they could be forced to work together or possibly form an alliance, which would make that war against terror even more difficult. 
Finally, we're going to talk about North Korea. Uh, Kim Jong-un, uh, a campaign by him to drive tourism in the country, uh, is somewhat backfired, I gather. <laughs> Well, according to this article in uh, news.com.au, an Australian website, he's desperate to promote tourism in the mm. country uh, in a bid to, to, I guess, to attract foreign money. Yeah. Now, many of these visitors are Chinese, and recently uh, they named uh, one of the worst hotels in North Korea. It's called the Riangan Hotel. There are not many there, and this one apparently takes a cake for being the worst. Mm -hmm. They weren't very thrilled with, uh, with many things. For instance, visitors complained about padlocks on the fire escapes. Mm -hmm. They said there was no running water or warm water in some rooms. Uh, one reviewer said Western, Western prisons are actually better. Another oh. compared them <laughs> to the Soviet era. And I yeah. quote from one reviewer, I flushed the toilet and my feet got a wash. <laughs> Do you think you get a little chocolate on the pillow? <laughs> that's that's the most it. important thing for me, <laughs> getting a little chocolate on the pillow. It was like that one. All right. North Korea, perhaps not a destination. Thank you very much.